Hey there. I was at the Tilburg Pen Show and I bought a Parker Vacuumatic from Francis Gosens and I'm quite sure that uh, quite a few know that name and maybe some of you don't. Francis is the designer uh, of the Conid bulk filler fountain pen. He's known as Fountain Bell on uh, uh, the Fountain Pen Network. <coughs> Excuse me. And I think his fountain pen is quite revolutionary because of the filling system. It's called bulk filler because it has a filling system that kind of folds away in such a way that you can use the entire barrel to store ink and almost always uh, an ink system like a piston filler uh, the piston will get in the way and will actually take up space and that is space you cannot use to store ink so after the show Francis and I got in contact through email we talked about the pen a bit and he and his uh, colleague Werner um, sent me one of their pens to review uh, which is very very nice so today I'm going to talk about the pen I know that a lot of you <laughs> have been looking for uh, forward to a review of this pen. I'm glad to oblige you. Many thanks to Francis and Werner for sending me this pen and um, let's talk about it. Get a little sleeve. Here's the box. I think it's a nice box. Bulk filler, Conid. It says innovation in writing and for once I actually agree. A lot of manufacturers say this and then it's just a cartridge converter pen. Well this is not. It's something completely different. Designed by Fountain Bell. Open up the box and you get a bunch of things. Let me just take some stuff out before I drop it. I have to send this pen back, you see, so I don't want to damage this. Um, here we got the uh, a nice little plaque that says, Conid, this certificate of authenticity accompanies the Conid FPR demonstrator streamlined bulk filler with unique number, number uh, engraved, Francis Hosen's uh, hand, uh, his, his uh, signature, and uh, Werner's signature. Uh, I think that's uh, very, very cool. Uh, it's just nice to get this sort of plaque thing going on there. I love it. All right. In the box are a little polishing cloth, filling instructions, which for this pen you will actually need, uh, because it has, it, it has a bit of a manual. It looks cool. It reminded me a little bit of Twisby. Uh, Twisby does these these colorful drawing things. Um, it's all very very cool. Uh, I, I'm going to demonstrate how that works uh, to you in a second. Uh, and um, you know that's that's pretty much all there's to it. Filling instructions and instructions on how to use them. Um, all right. A little uh, satchel with some tools. You have to purchase these separately, but I specifically asked Vanna if I could get them too. You get a little Allen wrench, and you get this nice little tool um, to disassemble the pen, and that's really, really cool. I love that. So you know, I love disassembling pens, and this is really cool. So very nice. I'll show you how that works in a second. And then here you have the pen. This is their streamline model. There's also a flat top where the uh, cap and, and barrel have more flat ends. This is a little bit more aerodynamic. I love it. I'm going to discuss the past the pen, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'm going to do a writing sample. Alright, now what is so, I want to start out by saying what's so revolutionary about this pen. Well, let's see if I can make this focus. Um, here we go. Okay, so what you do to fill this pen is you unscrew the blind cap there. You see that? And you see that this little piston, that seal, moves away from the second ink reservoir. There's a second ink reservoir there that's now sealed. When I open this up, you see that in a Visconti Power Filler 2, for example, you see that the seal pops away and there would be ink that can enter that ink reservoir. Okay? Now, I pull this all the way back and I keep screwing and look what happens that little piston screws into that black thing you see it then right there you see this little metal let me see if I can make the focus just a bit more there we go you see this little metal hook thing right well look what happens see that black thing just turned away there you can put it back in place and you can turn it away and once you turn it away 
you can just push it down and then it functions as a piston. So what you can do now is put that to your ink bottle, pull that, you draw up ink. And then when you are done, what you do is you screw this, this end, you just screw it back in place, then you are unscrewing that piston again, you can push it all the way down, screw that back in place, and then this little rod will stay in place, but the whole ink, the actual piston seal, is out of the way. So you can fill up the entire barrel with ink. Now what I'm going to try to do... Why do I got my ink? I wanted to use this ink, um, because that's a nice little bottle. And what I'll see... Of course, I should not point this in my window, because then you can backlight. And we got the bottle of ink. Alright, we're going to turn this around. But you can see as much of this as possible. We're going to make that focus. Now we're going to see what we can do there. Everything is submerged. Well, it is now. Push that back in. Do that two or three times. Well, I would say there we go. And then, whoops, that was not smart. See that draws up a lot of ink. Now I just screw the piston thing back in place. I take the ink core. wipe off the pen and we have a lot of ink in the barrel. Let me just close that bottle because I have a knack for knocking over bottles of ink. And there we go. So that's what's so spectacular about this pen. That's what I love about it. Alright, now um, pen. Pass the pen. We start on top, we get a very interesting day and night, yin and yang type, uh, black and white thing going on there. Round it off because it's a streamlined model. There you get the nib, you can see the nib through the cap, and you have this nice clip. The clip is very functional, not too tight, not too loose. Then we get... The center band it says fountain bell conid bulk filler of course the barrel now full of ink and then at the end it says conid bulk filler belgium oh sorry it doesn't say bulk filler it says antwerp so uh, city where it's made i'm assuming two rubber o-rings there now you might ask why would you put o-rings near the end of the barrel well when you post the cap, let me try and make that focus yet again. If you want to post the cap, keep an eye on those little rubber O-rings. Click! They slip, a little piece of plastic slips in between them, and boom, shakalaka, you got a posted pen. How about that? It's big, the cap doesn't post extremely deeply, but for those of you who want to post, they can. Okay, you've seen the filling mechanism, you don't have to go into that. Let's talk about the section for a bit. Uh, nice. I really find this very comfortable. This sort of hourglass shape works very, very well. Um, I really love it. It's a very comfortable feel. Um, because of this filling mechanism at the end there, it's a little bit top-heavy. It personally doesn't really bother me because it's nice and long. Whoops, I just spilled some ink there. That's bound to happen when you shake a pen around. What did I do to my ink cloth? Ah, there we are. So now there's ink on my laptop too. Hey, I'm a fountain pen lover, what can I do? Um, so very interesting. Um, you see this second ink reservoir that is now empty. And there we go. So if you were going to write with this, you would unscrew this thing just a bit. 
so that that ingress reservoir is fully open. I've shown you before, it is sealed off with this thing all the way down in place. Now we get more ink dripping out. <laughs> uh, I wanted to show you how this stuff is inked up. Um, and if you hold it upside down, clearly some ink is going to run out. That's normal. There we go. Okay, it doesn't leak. It's a perfect pen. It doesn't do anything wrong. All right, just don't do ink reviews or pen reviews like this and then hold it down all the way. Cool, so we got that covered. Um, that reservoir, the second reservoir is then open, that means that ink can flow out uh, and you can just write with it for extended periods of time. If you just want to jot a few notes, then you don't have to open this end up because there is still some ink in the reservoir. Should you go flying, you can open this up, have the ink flow back, and then this is protected. Should there be pressure differences in the cabin, um, then actually the pen will not leak, which is very great. All right, final thing to show you is the nib. I asked for the titanium medium nib. I think it looks very nice with that uh, the, the, that imprint they got going there. Conid M. And what I love about titanium nibs, I've only used one in my life on the uh, the uh, uh, Stipula Model T. And what I like about titanium nibs is that they are a little bit flexy. You have to be careful because uh, gold gives you a type of feedback when you're about to spring it. So open it up and make sure the tines don't spring back. Um, titanium doesn't really do that. So it can spring and then you don't really feel that you're pushing too hard. So be careful. A little bit of line variation should definitely be possible. Alright, that's the Conid bulk filler, streamline. You're warned not to over tighten the um, cap, um, which I can see because I mean there is a bit of plastic uh, below the center band, right? You don't want to crack that. Now, for those of you who care about such things, note how the nib and clip align. All right. What do I like about it? What do I not like about it? I love the filling system. I think it's very cool. Um, it definitely holds a lot of ink. You see there is still a little bit of an air bubble. Maybe I can get that out completely if I, you know, learn, experiment a bit, experiment a bit more with it. Um, for now, I would say this holds a very nice amount of ink. Operation is smooth. Everything is made to a great tolerance. It's it's just everything is tight. There are no gaps. Uh, it's it's really well machined. I'll come back to that in a second. You get these tools so you can carefully pry off these rubber O-rings, and then you can stick that Allen wrench in there, and you can uh, unscrew this bit uh, for cleaning. I will do a disassembly line video on this to show you how to disassemble it and reassemble it completely. And then once you screw that open, you can sort of stick this on there, then unscrew the whole thing. You can remove the whole piston assembly unit, which is great because that means you can clean it very easily. You can just unscrew the whole section, pull out the nib and feed, so the whole pen can be disassembled and cleaned, which makes your life very easy. So I love the way it's manufactured. I love the complete disassemblability. Yes, you have to buy the tools. You don't get them for free with the pen, but they're 15 euros, and I think for me, 15 euros would be worth it to not have to draw up water, expel it, draw up water, expel it, etc. You can just clean it straight away. Okay, so that's what I like about it. I like the option of a titanium nib. Titanium is a funky material. It's 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 great for nibs. Um, I, I I really like it. I think it's it's very very cool. Okay, things I don't like about it. Well, I have ink on the section now. I have been swinging it around a bit, but I noticed before this is excessive. Um, I think that's really because I'm doing this review and I'm doing this with the pen. I have noticed before when I was using it last week and that there is a tendency for the pen to get some ink in the cap. Um, and that may depend a little bit on the ink you use. You got some of those really fluid inks uh, that maybe are a bit more prone to it. Let's be fair, you also get that in other pens, but then you don't see it because the caps are not clear. But, you know, because it is clear, you see it. I know that annoys some people. Now, I think the one thing that people might not really like about this pen uh, is the the cost. Um, quite simply, uh, there is uh, it's it's not cheap to get one of these pens. Um, I'm just checking out their web shop. If I would buy this pen, I would pay 420 euros for the pen. For the titanium medium nib, 30 euros extra. Um, you can do custom nib work, but that's I, I did not uh, get that. As I said, that that Conid key and the Allen key, the the wrenches are another 15 euros. So you're you're talking about 
an expensive pen. And I'm sure that some of you are going to say, well, is that worth it? I mean, if I want something like this, I could get a Twisby VAC 700. It, ha it also has a, a system with a plunger and, and stuff. Uh, yes, that's right. You can, and that would be a lot cheaper. But there's something about this pen. The highlights, titanium nib, the way it's made, it feels like a very well-made pen. And that's hard to convey in a video if you're not actually holding it. But everything about the pen is right. The way it feels, as I said, very tight tolerances. There are no, I couldn't find gaps anywhere on the, the barrel of the pen. Not below the clip, nothing. I mean, everything is perfect. I think that's very good. But I can see how there are people who would say, well, that's too much for me. I would not spend that on this pen. Perfectly fine. That's what I like about it. That's what I don't like about it. One final thing I will say is, compared to the titanium nib on my Model T, this is a lot smoother. The difference is very, very noticeable. My titanium nib on the Model T gives a very specific type of feedback, which I always thought was because it was titanium. This pen shows that that is not necessary. So, well done. That was a lot of talk about one pen. It is high time that we see the writing sample. I'll just do some quick measurements right before that. I have 141 millimeters capped, uncapped, I have 137 millimeters, and as to weight, inked up. I have about 30 grams. It's an approximation, um, but that should kind of do it. So, I hope that was useful. Writing sample. And I'll see you later. Bye bye. All right, the Conid bulk filler. The ink is Papier Plume Forget Me Not Blue. And the nib is a medium titanium nib. That was tautological, wasn't it? The end of all things is a fox. How about that philosophical statement? How do you like that? Oh, did you see that? Ink just flew out. I bet I can do that again. Whoop, yep, now we can. Okay, sometimes it happens. Um, let me just grab my ink cloth. Make sure that the nib and feed. Yeah, okay. So I just pushed in the nib a bit further. Maybe that was what was causing this leakage. All right, I had disassembled it before. Maybe that's it. Don't worry about it. The pen didn't leak before. It was just me. You buy this pen, it works perfectly fine. I'm certain of that. All right, so some fast writing. It's a fox. No skipping, no skidding, nothing. It's a nice, wet writer. I absolutely love it. Um, even in this setting, I have not opened up that thing. As you can see, there's ink trapped in that reservoir, so I can write just fine. How about wetness? As I said, it's a pretty nice wet pen, even though this ink is maybe not the wettest out there. It lays down a nice, even patch of ink, and as you can see, very wet, which I just love. Okay, what about line variation? No pressure, and I'm slowly adding pressure, adding pressure, adding pressure. Will it ever stop? Look at that. Um, these weird lines you see are actually the feed that scrapes across the paper. All right. Now, I think you can really do a number on this nib. Look at that. That is a lot of flex that actually rivals vintage flex, I would say. Very, very pleasant. And I'm sure you can pull that nib out just a little bit further if this feed stuff really um, bothers you. And as I said, be careful. Um, you can see that the nib is bent slightly upwards. I think that's what titanium tends to do. Whoops, sorry. Um, but it performs very, very well, as you can see. And with no pressure, you get that really nice fine line and a bit of pressure you go to medium and then you can really go up to a double broad or something very very pleasant okay so final thing
reverse writing. There are some people who do that. Just turn the nib around, as you can see, you get a much finer nib. And the flow remains very good. So, I hope that was useful. I thank uh, Francis and Werner for sending me this. Um, I'll get it back to you as soon as possible. I hope this was useful, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.